Hi, my name is JV, and for my summer project, I'll be talking about global warming. So, global warming has been something that the Earth has been dealing with since around the 1800s, one of the causes being the Industrial Revolution when they started burning more fossil fuels like coal and oil, emitting a lot more greenhouse gases into our atmosphere. And there's something called the greenhouse effect, and basically how it works is our Earth has an atmosphere that protects us from being burnt, really, by the sun. And how it works is the greenhouse gases are trapping the heat in the atmosphere. And it's a good thing because it warms us and it keeps us from being super cold because if we didn't have our atmosphere, it would be too cold. But with the excessive burning of fossil fuels, more greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide are trapping heat in our atmosphere and it's becoming excessive to the point where our earth is becoming a little too hot. And this affects us all personally because there's been a bunch of wildfires, it affects our health, it's destroying habitats, causing rising sea levels. We've been in drought for a few years now and fun fact, not fun actually, 19 of the hottest years ever recorded have all been in the 21st century, which is crazy because there have only been 22 years in like 2000s and up, so that's like mind-boggling. And according to studies, if greenhouse gas emissions continue at this rate, they're expecting like a 2.5 to 10 degree Fahrenheit increase in the next century, which is also crazy. That's crazy hot. I know it might be a little hard to like imagine that. I know it was for me. So what I did was I crocheted an art piece. Um, I made a bag. Which, okay, it's kind of ugly. Don't mind how uneven it is. It's only because when you buy different brands of yarns, the thickness is different for each one, even though it's like considered the same kind. It's the yarn, it's not me. <laughs> Basically, um, wait, let me show you the back side just to make up for how ugly this side is. Okay, okay, now on the front side, okay. Um, this is 1884 and this is 2020, so each square represents a different year, and I jumped like 15 years, so. This is 1884, I don't really want to do the math, but like 15, 15, 15, you know, you get it. So I don't even really need to explain the colors that much because I think, um, oh yeah, so colors represent a certain temperature, but you can see here, there was not a single like row of red in 1884, and now jump into 2020, there's like five rows of red, that's crazy. It's so crazy. This was a really great way for me to visualize how much hotter it's gotten within the past few centuries, and I hope it's helping you too, because it's like actually a graph, you know? Um, but instead of talking to you about my process, I actually filmed it so you can watch me create like this really ugly masterpiece. But before I show you, let's just look at the back one more time just as a redemption for me. So this morning, I found this website that has been recording the daily temperature since 1884, and it's in Sacramento, which was the closest that I could find of like my community. Um, so I calculated the average for each month starting from 1884, but I jumped like every 15 to like 18 years. Um, so it goes from 1884 to 2020, and these are my calculations. Like you can't, you probably can't read it, but I understand it, so it's fine. I also just bought the yarn that I'm going to be using for this. It's like kind of a lot of yarns. I still haven't fully decided yet, but I think I'm going to do like one color, but two different shades. So I want to do pink, but then like the lower half of a temperature, what? Like the lower, the lower, the lower, um, <laughs> okay, I need to say, the lower half of a temperature, the, the low 80s, oh, yeah, like low, the lows and highs of a temperature, like low 70s would be like light pink, and then like the high 70s would be like darker pink, so I'm thinking like 70, 75 would be a lighter shade, and then 75 to 80 would be a darker shade of the same color, you know, so, from all of the data that I collected, it only ranges from... Oh, actually, it ranges from like... No, it doesn't. Okay. It ranges from 50 degrees to like high 90s. So, if I calculate that, that's just... That's just like, wait, what? 10 colors? So, I'm gonna do pinks. I think I'm gonna do that for like 80s. And then the 90s, I'll do like red. I'll probably do greens. No, but green seems more of like a 70 color. Okay, I'll figure this out and then I'll be back. Okay, so I chose all 10 colors. I'm doing blue, yellow, green, pink, and red. And the way that I'm actually making this bag is um, the data that I collected over the years, I chose nine years from 1884 to 2020. So in the bags that I usually make um, when I crochet my own bags, I have nine squares in the front side. So each square will represent a year. So, um... I think I'm going to do 12 rows on each square, um, representing each month, like January to December. And then each color will represent the temperature. 
and then I'm gonna connect all of them and then it's kind of gonna be like a graph to see how much hotter like it's gotten um, so I'm starting from 1884, ending at 2020, and I'm making 9 of those squares, so I'm gonna start at 1884, and I'll just work my way from there, so I'll show you when I'm done with all of those. Okay, I made my first one. It doesn't look that cute, but it's okay, because it's a graph. Um, this is January to December. I was cutting the scraps of my yarn, and I full-on cut my finger. Like, I... Okay, so I finished all 9 of them. And this is like my first time laying it out all together and it looks so crazy because let me let me show you. Um this is 1884 and this is 2020. Like looking at these two right next to each other. You can see it like progressively gets hotter and there's just like more red and pink in each one and like it gets darker, especially these last three. Like this one is so dark. This is 2020. So while I'm crocheting the back side, I also did want to talk a little bit more about global warming. Um, so plastic is one of the con biggest contributors to climate change because the making of plastic uses materials that burn a lot of fossil fuels. So the extraction, transportation, and manufacturing of plastic creates a huge amount of greenhouse gases that are released into our atmosphere. And you know, that's just like getting the plastic. That doesn't really take into account like getting rid of the plastic. Even though you can't really get rid of plastic because it takes like almost 500 years to decompose. So that's another problem itself because about 75% of plastic that's been produced is now waste. And that makes each person average out to like 300 pounds of plastic waste per year in the US. So that just makes you think, you know, because as much as we talk about these industries like burning all these fossil fuels, creating greenhouse gas emissions, we all have to take into account that like we have our own personal impact on climate change as well. So some of the things that we can do to reduce our plastic consumption that I'm sure we've probably all heard of already are buying fewer packaged products and switching from plastic water bottles and plastic Tupperware to reusable ones. I'm really just trying to like reduce the amount of single-use items that you have and use. Um, another thing could just be like reusing your plastic bags that you get at grocery stores or like investing in a good tote bag or you can even make your own like I'm doing. So really, it's all just about like being more mindful about the amount of plastic that we use and get rid of. And that's mainly all I wanted to talk about. Um, I'm going to finish the rest of these squares. I've done like four I'm on my fifth one, and then I'm going to join them, do the straps and everything, and I'll be back when I'm completely done. The horrendous bag. Yeah. Boo. So that was it for my summer project. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Here's one more look at the bag. Bye!